Welcome to The Life of Hair. My name is James Atkinson. Thank you for choosing to join into this week's episode. Now, this week's episode is a different style of video, one that I'm working on and trying to master. This episode and the next episode is not perfect, not by any stretch of my imagination, but it is a work in progress. So please bear with me in this new period of time where I'm trying to create different new and exciting content for you guys to absorb all of these things that are stored in my brain that I want to give to you um, on this journey. So I hope you enjoy this new angle, this new style of Life of Hair video. And if you want more Life of Hair education, go down to the description and sign up to my Patreon. It's hugely appreciated when you guys support me down there and you get access to lots of private lives um, where we really take a deep dive and I really try and uh, extract all of that information that I've got stored in my brain and give you a deeper insight so that you guys can help yourselves be better hairdressers on the salon floor. So until next time, look after yourself and I'll see you again very soon. So Claudia, lovely, thank you very much for coming into my studio and being my first ever, first ever <laughs> guest uh, of the Life of Hair YouTube channel in my new studio. Claudia, amazing hair, loads of hair. Too much. Too much Too hair. Too much of hair. <laughs> uh, just before we went on air, uh, Claudia described herself as a medieval wench. <laughs> 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 uh, which is not not the vibe that she was going for. You brought some images with you, yeah. Claudia, didn't you, uh, yeah. of what you'd like to uh, see, yeah. you know, from today's service. So we'll pop them up on the screen now mm -hmm. so you guys can get a good look of what Claudia showed us for inspiration. So I have, like, images for how I want the hair to look. Yes. And then the colour yes. after. So yes. this is the hair inspired. Yes. Um, so I think I want, like, some sort of flowy bangs Soft, here. yeah, bangs, yeah, great. Um, and I still want, a, this is the length I would yeah, like, yeah. so like this yeah, sort yeah, of level. Yeah. Um, and not too like tapered, yeah. if that makes sense, and not too thin at the bottom. But you want still, some weight in the bottom there, yeah. Yeah, it would still be nice to have those like wavy layers, so. Great. Same thing here. Same thing, yeah, same haircut, yeah. Um, yeah. And here. Same again, yeah, lovely. So I think that's just the vibe that I'm going for. Yes, yeah, good. So let's just quickly go through that with you guys uh, from a kind of cutting perspective. Mm -hmm. So you've seen the images up on the screen. Claudia's hair is incredibly thick, like incredibly thick. Uh, when you make a ponytail, it's probably inch and a half, two inches in diameter. So there's a couple of things that we really need to think about with hair like this. Two big factors is that it's naturally wavy. And if we overlayer it, uh, one, it's going to taper down, which is going to be something that Claudia just said she didn't want. That's something to avoid quite heavily is overlayering. So we can do some gentle layers because the pictures have got some softer layers, especially around the front, especially in the front corner, which is good because that means in the back of the head, we can keep everything much softer, much more natural feeling. And then we don't have to kind of get too uh, overexcited, if you will, with putting layers in where we don't need them. Now, one thing to uh, tell Claudia about with her hair, and this is something that we can, uh, you know, really think about right now, is that around the front hairline here, it's just got quite a lot of small, baby fine hairs. Now, um, the other thing is, is that if we cut in these long, soft bangs, is that they might go a bit curlier. Yeah. And as long as Claudia is aware of all these, contraindications of the hairstyle that she requires or asks for then that's fine because it's just about making people aware on the journey now I know a lot of you are very experienced hairstylists who watch regularly but then obviously some of this is for those guys out there who are just starting their journey too we've just got to make sure that when we do Claudia's fringe that we're not going to make it kind of too dominant uh, you know a feature of because she's got a lot of hair density so a smaller amount of hair here will create a bigger effect uh, in Claudia's specific case. So that is definitely, definitely something to remember when we're looking at creating, uh, you know, different shapes on people's hair. One of the things that we discovered with Claudia's hair is that in this area that it's very, very flat. Uh, and that's not because of Claudia's head shape. That's because the hair is so thick. So it would be good that we, once we put that long graduation in around the front here, that we continue that line through 
just to create a little bit of layer and a little bit of lift in this area. That would really then stop that looking so flat and this would taper this in a little, flatten it down a little, but it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't overlayer this back because the big thing here is that if we start to overlayer this hair, we're gonna create an awful lot of work. Everything that Claudia has showed me, there's no specific reason she can't have it. Um, one of the big questions we would need to ask consultation is how much work and effort do you want to put into your hair if they showed you some images of something that was going to have or need more maintenance. So if they showed you an image of you know those bangs and they had really, really curly front, are you going to straighten them out? Are you gonna put the effort in? Uh, we can show Claudia a very, very simple and easy way of managing those bangs and giving her a little bit more style on a day-to-day -day basis without necessarily needing to do very much to the rest of her hair. And I think those type of fringes that you've seen from the images are great for that specifically. They specifically give people a little bit more style, a little bit more interest in their hair without a lot more effort, you know, so the effort goes up a tiny you know amount a notch if you will uh, but the overall look of the hair becomes a lot more interesting you know so i think that's where those fringes have become so popular is because the reality of that is it's a little bit of work for something that looks pretty good and hence uh, most people's days are reasonably busy and and you know we're limited for time we don't want things that are going to cause us untold amounts of time and maintenance so that is really good and I'm super pleased that uh, Claudia's picked something that is really, really, you know, going to work on her hair. But we do need to take into account all of those things. With hair textures that are like this, that are very thick and very wavy, if you start layering them, you start thinning them out, you start making them grow. They swell in size. So it's really, really important that you, that you take that into consideration and you actually limit the amount of shape and movement that you put into the hair and put it in places where they can easily get to it. So like in the front, in the corner, those grown out fringe areas, give them styles that they can manage that are around their face because e people can easily get to their face. Whereas we start heavily layering the back, start heavily removing weight from the back, we start to give them too much work and therefore they're not gonna go away and manage it as best as they can. So, nice one, Claudia. And all consultations, guys, really focus in on each part of the service. So Claudia's gonna have her hair colored as well today, which is fantastic, but we need to make sure that we really emphasize the haircut, we really think about the haircut, and it's not a byproduct of the service, especially when someone's having color and cut. I have seen it from fantastically experienced stylists in my days where I have uh, watched them do a cut and color consultation. And because the color generally comes first, the emphasis is heavily on the color. And therefore then they feel like they're running out of time to um, allow to get the, the consultation right for the haircut. And then when they come to the haircut, the hair's wet and they go, oh, a little bit off, just wherever, you know, and then people go, oh, you know, and they sometimes let the whole service down because of that one specific area. So really, really important to remember each part needs its own very, very dedicated consultation. And if that means allowing a little bit more time onto your service to get that right, then please make sure you do that. Okay, so this is Claudia's natural parting. Not, I say natural in brackets because it does move around a little bit, uh, but we've kind of you know, decided that's pretty much exactly where it's gonna go roughly most of the time. And then we're gonna take a, a triangle section exactly like we took when we colored it, take that triangle and take it to exactly the same place on the opposite side of the head. So we're gonna leave that out of the way for now. Now when uh, Claudia and I were doing the consultation, we were discussing length. Claudia was looking to take off a good bit of her hair, you know, she wants to kind of come up uh, by about six inches or so. There's a lot of hair. It's been a while since Claudia's had a haircut. It's been a, lot, a while since a lot of people had a haircut. Lockdown, <laughs> this is a lockdown recovery job. Uh, but we're gonna cut the length first, okay just to make sure that we kind of know where we're at with it all. We're gonna cut, what I always tend to do, you know, when, when I'm cutting someone's hair, um, I cut in the side when I'm cutting the length first. Um, and then we can kind of say to them, right, is that, does that feel right? Do you want more or less? And I'm always very, very um, conservative as well with the amount that I cut off, because it's the amount of times people have said to me, 
oh no, that's fine. And it's actually way less than I than we agreed. So um, what I do is I cut one side, I then bring round the opposite side and I show them the difference. And then I just get them to say yes, no, or indifferent. So I've just showed Claudia in the mirror uh, the amount that we've cut off and she wants to go a little bit more. So I'm gonna bring it back round to the side and then I'm gonna cut off another couple of inches and then I'll show her again. But you know, by starting in the side, a bit like if you cut a short haircut in the side, you know, and the ear is the marker. I just want it to just, just cover my ear. You know, then that gives you a good idea. So we're just going to show Claudia again in the mirror. Yeah, I think that's good. Yep. I don't always hide the mirror under the desk, obviously. But if people don't want to see themselves, then they've had a result, haven't they? Um, so, yeah, Claudia's happy with that. Once we've got that as a guide, we can then do exactly the same thing on the opposite side and then work into the centre back. Uh, that's quite a nice way of doing it. I personally prefer that way. I know a lot of you, when I'm cutting hair, ask questions like, how do you get it the same both sides? Um, well, it just comes with experience, I suppose. But uh, the more you do it, the easier it gets. I very rarely section off the side of the head into more than one section, even on thicker hair types like Claudia's. And I'm using very, very sharp scissors and it easily goes through volume of hair that Claudia has. And I think that saves a lot of time, effort and energy because when you're cutting, you know, hair, you can definitely take too many sections. I've seen that so many times where people are taking microscopic fine sections and then really really struggling to be able to see their guide so we take a little bit off have a little measure up okie dokes we need to take about that much more off put that into back into position and Claudia's head is just neutral square we're not tilting the head over left or right or anything like that don't lift the hair as you cut it you do this you'll get graduation for sure but if you keep it nice and low and now we have got two sides in the front and we can continue that line through to the center back okay so we're in the back now we're going to comb the hair down into natural fall we are going to and we're going to take a section that runs from just above the occipital bone in between the occipital bone and the highest point of the hair and we're going to incorporate some of that front section that we just cut into the back so that we can see that we've got a guide to work from. So we're in the back uh, of the head now and we've got sides. And anybody that watches me regularly knows that I love a couple of guides. Uh, so we're going to get Cloudy to pop her head down a little bit. Okay, and we're going to come in, scissors behind the hair, look at the opposite side just to make sure that we're kind of aiming in the right direction. Once we've cut it through the comb like that, we can come through with our fingers and check it. But what I would say is that we want to be a little bit mindful, especially with hair like this, that we haven't put it under too much tension. Very, very lightly holding it between my fingers. Put the hair into natural fall. I'm all the hair straight back now. Keep, make sure the head's slightly down, work to the guide from underneath. Now we've got our section in there, we can work to our fingers. Our fingers will create a little bit more elevation because we're naturally just lifting the hair away. But once we've got our first guide in there, we don't need to worry too much about elevation because we're cutting to static line that we've already created with zero elevation. The way we used our comb, came in behind the section with our scissors and cut that first line in. If you want to go back and make sure that you've got no graduation in the shape, by all means, go ahead and do that. Have a little measure up in the corners. Always measure the same piece of hair in the same place on the head at the same point on the body. And that way it'll always be bang on. So we need to just work out, is that too much hair or is that enough? I think that's probably just a fraction too much. I'm just going to take a bit out the thick side. I think the thin side's okay. And what I mean by the thick side and the thin side is because it's a side parting. There'll be less hair on this side and more hair on Claudia is left. So we're going to pull the hair out from the head shape, like horizontally straight out like this. We're going to kind of just roughly cut it to length just to get rid of some of this because yeah, boy there's a lot of hair. Cloudy is going to take that home for a boyfriend, put it in a locket, pop it around his neck so no other girls can. What's that around your neck? Oh it's my girlfriend's hair. Oh. That's the only way <laughs> that we can tell he's not single. <laughs> just a little long still but obviously I'm quite happy to work my way down. I work my way down a lot when I'm cutting hair. That's going to be about right. Now, if we just look closely at the edge of this, we've got a little layer in it because we elevated. Okay, so we've got a shorter piece of hair and a longer piece of hair. Not by a lot, just enough just to soften the edge. And also, we're longer in the corners and shorter in the middle uh, because we elevated and over-directed into the center. So we took a triangle, we pulled it all together into the middle and we cut the hair horizontally. And then, because we did that, Claudia has got long bangs. And what we can just do, because it's offset, because it's an offset parting, so it's slightly off to the side, 
we can just take a section of hair diagonally across and just elevate it up and just cut the corner off this section just like that good stuff okay so that's that nice and simple we're going to do a long graduation shape now nice and easy all we want to do is create a little bit of shape in this front corner long graduation is one of those techniques that i think a lot of people don't necessarily nail at college in fact a lot of hairdressers don't seem to nail it unless they dedicate time and effort and energy to it some other point in their career so i'm just going to show you the pre-section very simple again we're going to do it in the natural fall of the hair exactly as we did our coloring pre-section so we're going from just about the highest point of the head down to the back of the ear and we're separating it front to back just like so we're then going to pull all the hair forward and this is a bit like how you'd cut, you know, the shag or the, or the wolf cut, for instance, which everybody is raving about at the moment. Super, super simple way of cutting a long graduation as well. We've taken a one inch size parting over where the hair would be parted naturally. Um, and we're going to elevate the hair straight up in this instance, just straight up into the air. And we're going to roughly take it to the shortest point we want it to fall down here. So we went about four inches from the ends. So if we come up and we cut a diagonal line, so it's shorter at this end and longer at this end, we split that into two. So we've got two definite guides. And because Claudia's hair is quite fine in the front, she's got a lot of hair in the back, a lot of hair, okay? We can take this whole section, and actually if I just show you from the front first, we can take this whole section, elevate it straight up. So we're pushing the hair over the parting like that. And then we're simply just following that line that we just cut, which is out of shot. <laughs> That's why you need the comfort monitor, guys, you know? I'll show you on the other side. <laughs> Your hair's so long, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> so we're gonna take our section here. We're gonna go right through the Prater Ridge. Now remember, this left side on Claudia's head is thicker, heavier, more hair, uh, because it is a slight side parting. So I'm gonna get in front of Claudia. I'm gonna double check that I'm over directing this hair to that parting i'm going to hold my fingers at a 45 degree angle i've got some of the hair from my previous as a section as a guide but it's not really clear so i would rather just stop take another piece of hair add it into that section and then cut again than be guessing this is the shape that we created here you can see we've got a shorter piece and then that graduates down through the front. So if we want a little bit more of a shape around the front, and Claudia's got really, really thick hair, sometimes it's okay to come back in and just freehand in a little bit more shape into that front section, should you need it. As I say, in this particular instance, the density is saying to me that it's probably gonna be better to have a little bit more shape so that we can see it once it's dry rather than it disappearing into oblivion. Okay, so we're gonna connect in the back to the front at this point. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna take a centimeter of the hair that we took, that we've just cut from the front, and we're gonna comb it into the back, and that will be our guideline for the back section. Now we're only doing a very subtle long layer here in the back. So there's our section in exactly the same vein as we cut the hair uh, pre-section before, all the way around to the back of the ear just there. All right, we're gonna take a center profile section. So that's gonna go straight down the back of the head. And then we're gonna pick this section up. We're gonna turn Claudia around so you guys can see. We're gonna pick this section up and then we're gonna use to utilize the shortest piece of hair from the guide that we've taken from the front section. So there is just a tiny little bit of hair to come off there relative to the section we took at the front. And that's fine, because that's all we wanted in this particular instance. We just wanted to get a little bit of lift in here. And actually I can see already that just even by taking that little bit off there, it's lifted that crown area enough that this will seem flatter. So it's just about changing the weight and the perception of that weight. So then what we're gonna do is split the hair into two. So we've got an even guide on both sides. And then, and because of the amount of, of, of hair that's gonna come off this hair in the occipital bone region, is never going to meet the hair when we elevate it up. So you don't need to worry about it. Just clearly see my guide there. And then this hair can just go straight up. We don't need to worry about over directing this hair into the middle or anything like that. We can just elevate it straight up to the sky. Now I haven't showed this trick yet, 
but I thought, well, you guys may as well see this trick. This hair is so thick and tricky to comb. It's bending my comb to breaking point. So what I'm using is my paddle brush to elevate the hair up. And then I'm just using my comb for the final combing straight up, cutting a square line, just like that. We do exactly the same on the opposite side. And then what I'm gonna do is I won't show you all of the sections, but I'm gonna quickly cross check my haircut in the opposite direction. So I'm taking a horizontal section here, elevating it straight up. And if there's just the dust to take off, we're good to go. So um, we're gonna teach Claudia how to dry her own fringe. Now I'm sure she knows how to dry the rest of her hair and how she dries the rest of her hair is akin to, you know, how the pictures wear it. It's fine, she can wear it smooth and wavy, however, but her fringe may need some TLC from time to time. And uh, one of the best things for Claudia to be able to do with her own fringe is to gather up her fringe. And because we've cut it in this very neat little triangle, it'd be very easy for you to find Claudia. Okay. And all you're gonna do, Claudia, is just pull your hair down towards your face. And that's it. And it doesn't really matter what brush you use. I'm using a little round brush just for sort of extra tension. Tension will help it to be a bit smoother. And bump your ankle. There's your fringe. We'll show her her fringe now so she can see it before we dry the rest of her hair. Although well, when you show a client their fringe, just their fringe dry, it does look a bit strange, but there we go. Yeah. This is the finished result from the haircut, but if you want to see how we did this colour, then pop back on Sunday to see the full technique of how we went from the consultation to this beautiful ombre, balayage, whatever you want to call it, type of effect. Look after yourself, guys, and I'll see you again in the next one.